Bernard Arnault is knocking on her door, uh, but it will definitely happen. I'm pretty sure. It will happen. We see Peter do extremely well craftsmanship. I mean, if you're that scared that this 2% is gonna kill you, don't drink it. Keep your expectations low, guys. Extremely talented. This is turning into something a little grotesque. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. Today we have a super exciting and extremely important topic, I would say. A topic nobody has kind of addressed. I haven't seen a single article or a single video where one is talking um, about what will happen when Phoebe Philo has shown her first collection. I think it's super inter interesting and um, I mean obviously from the from the headline you know what my opinion is but let's start with that and yeah do not forget to subscribe if you like my extremely professionally and well prepared videos that I always publish. Uh, for all of you guys um, and yeah do not forget to subscribe or leave a like or follow me on Instagram this is where I more like share my personal style because it's not really the place to share extremely deep well prepared and research topics so this is what I do here um, first of all before I start with the video I think it will be interesting to know and I think um, I will be pretty surprised I guess so that's why I'm asking that right now Tell me like on a scale from 1 to 10 and how far you would um, give one of your organs to Phoebe Philo if she would need one. Just to be prepared to know um, when I read your comments like in how far you are addicted uh, to Phoebe Philo. So, you know like 10 for example being like 10 organs. Do we have that many? I'm not good at anatomy. This is turning into something a little grotesque. Okay. And also what you need to know, and I think most of you guys already know, or you see it from the aesthetic aesthetics that I share on Instagram and here, that I'm obviously a huge Oseline fan. And every woman that says right now in the century living right now, saying I don't like Phoebe Philo, has some issues, dad problems, mom problems, confidence problems, I don't know what, but you need to have an issue if you say I do not like this. You know, I mean, we're all well aware of that. But, and there's always a but, you know, no matter how addicted and how great a brand is, there's always a but to it. And how, I mean, you might have seen that from the caption right now, um, what my opinion is and how I feel about this topic uh, that nobody has addressed. Nobody has talked about uh, how successful Phoebe Philo can get or will get. So we're starting right away. So we're starting with a one minute recap of Phoebe Philo's life because I think we need to know like what she has done and maybe some of you also do not know every single step, you know, her whole LinkedIn is maybe not in everyone's heads, which should definitely be the case, but it might not be. Phoebe Philo was born in 1973, so she is 48 years old right now. She looks extremely good. I mean, I wish I looked like that when I'm 48. Um, less talented, but just as good looking. Um, she was actually born in Paris, uh, which is pretty funny because it's Paris and it's a cool place, but she is British and her parents uh, went to Paris for their work and when she was two years old they already moved back to Britain and she already had this, in all, already in her very early stages of childhood, um, the sense for creativity and also designing things. She, I read somewhere that, somewhere that she was like really addicted to Madonna when she was 10 and then I'm like, where do we these hints? Where, where are these hints of Madonna? I don't see them anywhere and I'm actually happy about that, but maybe it's like the grunginess, the edginess, um, more like in terms of Madonna and not like the one-to-one -one adaption of her style, which I'm happy about. So yeah, when she was 10, she already had this very creative mindset and etc. And then she started studying at Central St. Martin's um, fashion design. And this is like a very important part in her life because that's the place where she gets to know um, Stella McCartney. And Stella McCartney, we know her of course now, um, also studied there and after finishing school, she started to work at Chloe. She was the successor of Karl Lagerfeld then at, um, at Chloe. And Phoebe Philo was her design assistant. So Phoebe Philo was assisting Stella McCartney. And they were like the two very famous best buddies uh, in UK, I think back at that time, you know, like the two stylish 
and cool girls and Chloe was also a cool brand when um, Stella McCartney was designing. I have to say personally also like the pieces, uh, not a huge fan of her uh, ready to wear now, but that's a different topic. So um, yes, yeah, she started design assisting um, to her and in 2001 Stella McCartney decided to create her own namesake label, which is still pretty successful I would get, uh, I guess, I mean for, um, and she started with this whole vegan thing and non leather etc. Anyway, ugh, I need to focus. So Stella McCartney's 2001 is leaving for her own brand and then of course there's Phoebe Fidel left who was the assistant and she turns to be the new uh, creative director of Chloe which is a very important time at Chloe. And true old Celine addicts will know that we're also looking for Phoebe era Chloe pieces because it's just anything that this woman has touched is like turning to gold or people just adore it and love it. So um, in 2001, she starts to be the creative director. And this is like, I do not know if you remember these dresses. And I feel like personally, Chloe is like such a summer's brand. You know, some brands just have are like stronger in wools and coats and some brands are just stronger in dresses etc i feel like chloe is definitely like this bohem nonchalance chloe a bit western american vibes also but also like cultural appropriation or something so uh something in between but it's actually i mean overall a cool label it's, everything's fine um she's turning that brand into a really hip brand you know like oc times misha barton is wearing this silk draped dresses that nowadays look maybe pretty normal to us but i mean if we have a look i think it's the 2004 collection she has this um she has this silk dress she's doing a lot with silk and drapes and a very elegant but also you know like you get these 90s vibes still i also get like a bit of these tom ford vibes in terms of sexiness but there's always something interesting about it i have just one dress in my mind right now I was like this fluent silkyish dress and then she has these black uh, drapes on them which is disruptive and something that we until now love um, at Phoebe Philo skills you know turning something very easy very basic into something extremely interesting and I also feel like Phoebe is like um, turning brands into a sophisticated white project um, it's insane how she how she is able to um, turn things into something different and level it up so it's 2001 she's a Chloe extremely successful it's a great time for Chloe, for Chloe. and in 2006 uh, she has already married and is getting pregnant and she's expecting a little baby girl uh, and she is an extremely family's person so family is always first for uh, Phoebe Philo, which I think is pretty surprising when we think that she has been working like very hard ten, for 10 years as creative director at Celine, but uh, it's always family first for her. So uh, she stops, she doesn't continue with her job at Chloe in 2006, so she has only been there for five years as a creative director, and she's having a little pause. And then in 2010, Bernard Arnold is knocking on her door from LV Marsh and is saying like, dude, we have this extremely unprofitable brand called Celine uh, that is not working well at all. We bought it in 1996 and it doesn't work. Please come help do something for us. It's 2010. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I mean, this is definitely how this conversation went, by the way. So um, she's doing it. And the rest is history, I would say. So she starts in 2010 at Celine. Uh, which was a pain point brand in the portfolio of Elva Mush and is turning it into an, an extreme cash cow um, but of course not for the full 10 years we will come to that so this is like the story and I mean you might have realized she hasn't been like at 10 design houses or anything you know like there are people that went from Chanel to Fendi to I don't know what but she just worked at Chloe and then went to Celine and already revolutionized the world so so much about Phoebe Fowler's life. Now, coming to the point of why I personally think that Phoebe Philo is not going to be as successful as she was at Celine previously and um, how she will fail in terms of our expectations uh, and maybe also her personal ones because there are certain criteria that I think we have to be in mind when we talk about Phoebe Philo. And um, this is not a critique to her personal skills, but more like political issues that you have when you create your own label, like years later, even if you are like 
one of the most influential designers of the 21st century. I was, I guess, not a child anymore when pub public ink, monster ink was right. So I think if we put everything kind of together, we kind of get like three main reasons why it's not going to work as many imagine. First reason. Um, when comparing to Celine, and this is what I'm doing because this was her biggest success and as you have previously heard, there wasn't a lot going on before that. Phoebe Philo started at Celine when it kind of hit rock bottom. You know, um, it wasn't a profitable brand, it wasn't a stylish, hip, trendy brand, anything. Um, and she, it was her duty to change that. And uh, which might be something interesting because you cannot really fail when something has already failed. You can only improve something. So when we see her, her career at Celine, we see that it's an evolution because it started somewhere very low because expectations were also maybe like not the highest at Elbe Marsh. And every time you see an evolution, the, um, the development and the success you generate looks so much more extreme than when you, for example, start at a very high point already. So she started here with very low expectations at Celine and was not profitable. Nobody was really aware of the brand. And then she improved it, 11 collection, 12, 30, 40, 15, Daria, Werbery, Jürgen Teller, explosion in 2015, 16, 17, 18 were like hit points. And then it was like getting kind of stable. And um, as far as I know and read some articles, not as profitable as it used to be. Anyway, this is like her career, you know, I mean, I need, would need a graph or something. It started like this, you know, it went very well. Then it was like this, 2015, 2018, and then it kind of get, got the stable again, but on a very high level, I guess. So when we imagine that Phoebe Philo is going to um, bring out her own label, she is not starting here where she started with Celine. She is starting right here or maybe even higher because our expectations are that high. And I think the reason, and number one reason, why it will be an official fail is that all of our expectations are just too high concerning this woman and her capacity. Because, I mean, she already had this very great development. She already had extremely strong revolutionizing um, collections. She has this extremely idolizing, iconizing community that is obsessed with this woman. Um, it's a bit hard. I mean, she is definitely a pop star in designer's universe. So um, how can you top that? Of course, you can say now, okay, you know what? She will just do it even better. I mean, why should she stop there? But if we compare it to other designers who already, you know, who stopped designing, start again, there usually is a peak point in your career. And I know that a lot of creative people have an issue with that because they're like, okay, if you get like too successful, you will never be, I mean, you still have to continue like for the next 20 years. So how am I going to top that? It will, whatever I succeed, it will always be in the shadow of what I once created. And um, well, I'm very sure that it will not hit this whole point um, she hit at Celine's because we see that she kind of was like the phoenix out of the ash and created something of a label that nobody had in mind and nobody was thinking of and turned it into something so good, so well made and so extremely needed um, that this kind of de development cannot even occur, you know, she cannot get even more loved for the pieces and uh, I think this is uh, an issue she will face and I mean it's even, it's not fair for her because it's actually like our fault that we have these kind of expectations. But uh, she is, I think, facing like so much pressure. I think there are not many designers that have that extremely strong expectations and pressure on them in terms of design and creativity. So this is also why I'm extremely curious what exactly she will design. Uh, because, I mean, this is not one of the topics, but because I don't want to talk about the design, etc. Because this is really something we cannot expect. But I'm thinking that I mean, it's different if you're designing for a brand that is LVMH 100% or if you're designing for a brand that's like actually your own brand and LVMH is just a stakeholder with 10%. That makes a difference also in your designs. I, I think she will actually personally have a different pressure because it's kind of her own brand. Um, but maybe also, you know, with this huge design team, she had extremely good support. I mean, we know 
brands like uh, Bottega and Peter Do. Um, these were all people uh, that learned from Phoebe and worked with her. So she also had an extremely well crew. I don't think it will be worth support, but I think it's something different if LVMH just um, gets a bit more money of your brand or less. So we have to bear in mind that under the um, head of Celine, there are like so many people and so many good people who are at very good places right now uh, were in her team. And I'm not sure if she will have that. And also she's facing these expectations that we all have and it's very easy to get disappointed. And it's not her fault, it's just, she was too good, that was the problem. So reason number two is something, this is just something I assume, she already reached the top and she already is in this club of the 27 years old kind of. She already achieved everything she could achieve, so what is going to come? I mean, of course there are designers who are able to exceed themselves like continuously, with developing ideas and creative to, uh, creativity, we know like Jonathan Anderson is doing it like for 10 years now. Um, I mean, I, for example, brands like Versace, but are these brands really like changing or getting like even better or are they just like continuously good? Um, in my opinion, they're just very, very good. Uh, I, I have like, especially Jonathan Anderson in mind now when I see Loewe. Um, it's, it's good, I like his, I like actually all the collections usually, but there are stronger ones. There's also like 2019-18, my favorite phase uh, of him at uh, Loewe and J. Jonathan Anderson. But, um, but is it getting better or is it just as good as it is? Phoebe, for example, in my personal opinion, uh, Fall 17 and Spring 18 are untoppable. You know, they won't be, uh, there won't be any collections that are going to be greater in my opinion, you know. I mean, these Jürgen Teller picks, we see the influence until now. Sorry, Prenza Skula, sorry, Bottega, sorry, all of you who wanted to have Daria as their main model. Um, we still see them until now. I mean, Zara just stopped recently, I guess, the uh, Jürgen Teller effect. I mean, even Jürgen Teller stopped it. So, I mean, he doesn't like analog cameras anymore. He was the reason why I got one. And I mean, you had Joanne Didion in your collection, you know, the, the, the woman, which is the epitome of sophistication and intellect, which are also the, the synonyms that one can definitely find suiting to the brand of Celine. So uh, Joanne Didion was like the perfect point. And then you have these pictures of Daria, which is an homage to Joanne Didion, uh, who also was an ex Vogue editor and, um, and had a lot of publications and is a very strong feminist and everything. So overall, just a cool woman. So you already had all of these things. Um, how can you top that? You, you cannot really top that. She already achieved everything she could achieve. So she cannot top that. She was already on top. Reason number three why she will not be able to succeed as strongly as she did is the fact that she has new competitors. Um, if we think about 2010, I do not know if you have on your mind what kind of brands were hip right now. Back in 2010, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't any minimalistic brand. You know, there wasn't anything left from the 90s. Uh, maybe a bit Helmut Lang, Alexander Wang maybe, I don't know, was he, was he out in 2010? I'm not even aware of that. Um, so she had different competitors. This is also what made her impact coming to Reason number one, why she was like that successful. She was one of a kind. There weren't any other designers doing stuff like that. Looking at the people right now, go on Netta Porta, go on Essence, check out the brands. What do you see? Extremely influenced also at her daytime at Celine. When she was there, we already saw the influence on other brands. But now, who do we have now? We see Bottega Veneta with Daniel Lee, who just comes from Celine, you know? He was working with Phoebe Fido. We see Peter Do, extremely well craftsmanship, extremely talented. We see that, uh, I, I, I follow him and saw that, see that in his stories. The, the, this preciseness, this precision in fabrics and cuts is just something um, I, I think we cannot appreciate enough. He wasn't existent. He exists now and does extremely well things. Uh, the Mayas at Josanda are like one of the top brands right now, like the most successful ones and an extremely interesting brand. Um, Kate, I mean, even if that's maybe like the more feminine approach on minimalism exists and also has a huge fan base, you know, brands like Totem, Swedish based, you know, designed by Ellen Kling, uh, which also is at a good price point in comparison to high-end other brands. 
uh, and extremely well made. I have one or two uh, totem pieces and they're extremely well. So now she has a different competitor surrounding. She used to be the only one, which was the reason why she was that successful because she was filling in this huge hole we had in our fashion world, which didn't, um, which didn't have any representation of women who had a stylistic approach of sophistication, professionalism, because Celine, turned in, Celine was a brand you could wear at your corporate job and still look like you come from the fucking runway. You know, that was possible with these pieces. And um, there wasn't a brand like that before. So she created and filled this hole, this huge gap in this industry of minimalistic, but extremely well designed pieces uh, and was the only one doing that. And even though she was maybe also the greatest, there weren't others doing it. We have Princess Gula now. I mean, the last few collections were extremely strong designed, uh, inspired by Celine with Phoebe, but now I feel like they're coming back to their core. It's also a brand that I truly love. I love Princess Gula. I think it's the one of the most important contemporary brands. Um, yeah, it's a different surrounding. Even if your name is Phoebe, there are brands that were here like for four years now and that implemented their strategy. We know the it pieces, we know the Josanna it pieces, we know the Peter Du blazers and shoes right now. We know Bottega overall is like the trendy part of Celine, maybe, you know, like the trend focused girls wear Bottega. So you also need to come in this group of people and establish yourself. And of course, if your designs are great, you do not have to be scared that it doesn't work or anything but you also kind of have to fight against these people on the market. So it's a different surrounding, which I think is a definitely different situation for her. When the three main reasons why I think it's going to fail is the development she had as Celine is not possible anymore to recreate that, you know, from complete bottom to top. You know, we see this evolution that's intense. On the other hand, reason number two, she already had her peak, which was like the one of the biggest peaks of 21st century. Are you going to be able to top that? I don't think so. And reason number three, you have extremely strong competitors who are also doing all a very good job that you have to be confronted with and deal with and kind of succeed in between. So these are like my three main reasons and um, why I think Celine or Phoebe Philo's namesake brand, Phoebe Philo, is not going to be as successful as Celine and we shouldn't expect too much. I mean, I'm per, my personal opinion is I'm just happy she's coming back. I'm just happy we're going to see any creation of this woman in this world anymore because I cannot wait. I just love her uh, personally, her aesthetics, her thinking. Also, you know that she's like this family first person that I definitely wouldn't not have expected her to be. This is also something I realized while reading about her, which extremely makes her sympathetic. Not being a family person is also nice, okay? But I wasn't expecting it. Uh, so she is a family person and she's still successful. That's not easy to handle. She's extremely good with that. So I'm extremely happy she's doing anything for us, but keep your expectations low, guys. I don't think it's gonna be as successful and as revolutionary as the things we used to experience when she was at Celine. So this was all for me. Please tell me down below what you think about that. Do you think I'm just, you know, talking uh, too loud in my head right now and I should never have said these kind of things, which I will do because I'm I'm pretty sure this is, this is what's going to happen. Tell me down below. I'd really like to know what you think because of course this is still in Nostradamus vision of what I'm thinking, uh, but it will definitely happen. I'm pretty sure it will happen. So um, yeah, do not forget to subscribe again. So let's make a room tour. No, it's not cool here. Ah, ah.